Okay, so I'm doing an oil change. I just got done pulling my catch can. If you can see, this is, I have a Mishimoto catch can. This isn't an advertisement for any kind of catch can. Like, use what you want to use, but just use one. This is what this video is more or less about. Last time I did my oil was literally like a thousand miles ago. Um, I think it was really more like 900 and something miles. This is what's in the catch can. It's filled to the brim. You know what I mean? Like, good thing I actually have it down low so that it does, if it does start to back feed into the hoses a little bit, it won't be. It's got a long way to go before it gets up into the intake where the turbo is. So, on that side, it's a three port. Mishimoto XL. I thought it'd be good with an XL can. You know what I mean? I thought I'd be able to get like 6,000. I mean, not 6,000, like at least like two, 3,000 out of the XL can. I can't imagine, you know, what they're doing with the, the smaller can. But this is what's in it, and this is what's about to come out of it. Oh, yeah, this is uh, day two of uh, my STP. I did an STP um, Pro Series. Um, intake valve cleaner, the one you hang from the hood latch, spray through if you'll see. Just look at the other videos if you're interested. Um, but look, it's mostly water that comes out of there. It's like a lot of condensation mixed with a little bit of oil. Um, you know, if I'd have shook it up a little bit, it would have been more foamy. What I'm thinking about doing my next go round is pulling the bottom screw and putting a barb in and then running a, like a bigger hose. I had like a uh, fast religion set up here with uh, his hose, but um, I don't know. I'm not knocking his catch can set up. He had a great idea. I I'm just saying that for me, this was, this was better way to go. Um, the, I felt like the hose at the bottom was too small. Like it would let the water out, but like the gunk was like kind of staying inside of it. You would have to, couple times I had to take the can and dump it the other way to get like everything out of it that was the only issue I found with that but it was a great idea what he did the whole setup I'm um, not knocking the dude at all um, he'll take it that way though it's like you know any kind of constructive criticism but um yeah so I'm stuck doing this until I put a barb, which I do have, in the bottom of a can and run like a bigger hose down the bottom with my own little valve to just release the stuff. But I'm probably not going to do that until the summer when the weather gets better. I'm just going to, every thousand miles, pop this and drain it. Even if I don't change the oil, I'm going to take a look at this every, you know, going to have to, like every at least every thousand miles. Because uh, it just fills up so quick. But yeah, I mean, and my other point is, this is why you need a catch can. This is all going back into your to your motor. It's a windy day out here. But yeah, this is what's going back into your engine. It's going directly into your valves. This is what gets all caked up, burns up, turns black, and makes it so your valves start sticking and, and all that crap. That's why I'm trying everything in the book without tearing the car apart to get the valves a little cleaner. Um, like I said, I'm at 94,000. She just rolled over. So now I know what the deal is with this catch can. Um, I'm going to have to pay attention to it. You know, as soon as I get to around 900 miles, I got to start finding a weekend where I can do this. You know what I mean? So... Uh, it is what it is, but you know what? And at the end of it all, it's worth it for the peace of mind. You know what I mean? Like, just to know that I don't have all that crap getting going back up in there. And, uh, yeah, I left a little mess on the driveway. Uh, and it's a black top driveway. A little oil ain't gonna hurt if anything. It's gonna help it. But, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put the oil back in her. I just wanted to show, because I did a video, like... If you go and you look, it was not even like a couple months ago. It was like two months ago I put a video up of me doing this. So, you know, every two months I'm pulling the wheel off and doing this. 
I mean, look, it, I got an impact gun. It takes me all of like 10 minutes to do. You know, if I'm not trying to video it, if I just do it, pop the wheel back on and say have a nice day, it's really not that big a deal. I had a pump jack. You know what I mean? It's not anything crazy. You know, it's not something that's like extremely painstaking, but you do want to set aside like a, you know, a nice weekend or like right now it's gloomy, but it is what it is. I'm getting it done. Well, I'm in the mood to do it. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a juke thing. I'm gonna put this up on the video. But uh oh yeah, these are uh springs I got. These are aftermarket. Um, cause I've bent a couple and broken two on the right side already, just from like torque. Um I did did it once before I was tuned, and then again after. And these are a McPherson strut, supposedly. It's I think it's FPS is the name of the company. These were cheap. Already loaded. Um, they got an Allen key in the center, so they are adjustable if you look. You know what I mean? So, um, these so far, I've been on these like eight months, and so far so good. I mean, I get wheel hop, typical juke wheel hop, you know, from time to time. But, um, yeah, other than that, they've been holding up pretty good. And they were cheap. They were the cheapest ones. But so far, they've been the strongest. It's, um, you know, every once in a while, you find a gem in a rough, you know. Diamond in a rough. Gem in a rough. Diamond in a rough. But anyway, yeah. I just wanted to point these out because this is, like, the only thing in there that's, like, shiny and new still. But, um, I keep up on my boots. I try to spray everything. You know, keep everything, you know, maintained as much as I can. I don't want to have to pay for any crazy stuff because, I, you know, I wasn't paying attention or I didn't do enough maintenance. That's just not me. So. But, uh, yeah, that's where the catch can is. It's a hidden catch can. Originally, um, this was done up by uh, Matt from Fast Religion. Uh good dude uh in the juke community he really knows a lot um gotta give it to the guys like a mad scientist him and uh the guy from 2j down in atlanta they those two probably know the most about jukes uh, of anybody in the world basically but um i would say a lot of people copy and emulate what they do basically you know but uh yeah, there are some people that like put their own little twist to it though you know make it their make it their own that's what i'm trying to do anyway a little this a little that you know I, I go for the parts that i think make the best sense for me and um i set up what i wanted to do i'm actually making a little more power than i should be for this evt it's a little bit much putting down like 256 torque to the wheels it's kind of crazy cold weather days it's unbelievable what this car has been able to do but uh yeah that's it for now guys i just wanted to show you guys what's in the catch can because it's off the chain